The Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Ultra versus the Asus ProArt P16. Now, a lot of y'all have been waiting for this head-to-head -head review. Here it is, looking at the features, the functionality, and the performance of both of these really incredible laptops. However, one of them catches my fancy a little bit more. You'll have to find out later in the video. First and foremost, the build quality. They both have incredible aluminum build quality, aluminum top cover, bottom covers, and keyboard decks nearly the same thickness. I mean, you can barely tell that the ProArt is a tad bit thicker on the back side, and then this one's a bit thicker on the front side. So they're actually like the same thickness, just the way that they angle is a little bit different. So they kind of meet right here at the center and they're the exact same thickness. Now, as far as the weight is concerned, man, they are so close as well. I'm gonna have to let the specifications pop it up on the screen, decide which one actually weighs more. Now going ahead and taking a look at the ports, we're gonna jump up on the left side here. We have two USB type C's and an HDMI for the book four. We have a headphone jack, USB-A, USB-C, HDMI, and a square power adapter for the Pro R. Flipping them over, we have an SD card reader versus a micro SD card reader for the Samsung. We have a USB type A and a USB-A headphone jack, and then of course, a USB-C on the Pro Art. So if you're an SD card reader user, either you have a camera that has an SD card, or you like to have the micro SD card to expand your storage, or perhaps you're a drone or DJI Osmo 3 user, one of these laptops will be more advantageous to you. Now going ahead and looking at the bottom cover of these devices, I would say that I prefer the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Ultra. You can see how here I'm gonna point using the uh, other laptop. It's really nice and rounded. The bottom cover fits into the side panel very nicely. The Pro Art, you can see there, it's a little bit sharper. It takes a very harsh 90 degree angle. It's not as rounded like on the Book 4 Ultra. So I prefer the Book 4 Ultra design by just a tad. I think it's a little bit better design on the bottom cover. Now, while we're looking at the bottom covers, let's talk about the upgrade path. For both of these laptops, the RAM is soldered to the motherboard. But for both of these laptops, they have two M.2 slots, one occupied, one unoccupied. So both laptops, you can upgrade the storage without swapping the boot drive, which is very convenient in order to expand your storage. That is a huge highlight for these laptops because so many laptops these days that are becoming thinner and thinner and thinner are getting rid of the ability to upgrade your storage. Both laptops are capable of that. All right, let's go ahead and open and close the laptops with one hand. You can see that's done very easily with both. Let's check out the screen bounce. They both have quite a bit of screen bounce, not a big difference there at all. I think they stop at the exact same time. And then the screen flex. I would definitely say that the ProArt has a bit more screen flex than the Samsung. Now let's go ahead and drop those screens down again. Push on the top cover. Oh man, that's very, very similar. I think they're the exact same. Wow, that's very surprising actually. All right, now as we get the laptops opened up, you can see that there is a nice large trackpad on the Samsung Galaxy Book Ultra. I'm gonna spin these laptops around so you can take a look. But not far behind is the Asus trackpad. They're nearly the same width. There's a tiny bit of extra width on the Samsung. Really with the height, is where you get a little bit more trackpad out of the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Ultra. The Galaxy Book 4 Ultra has a really like firm click to it. It's just very, very firm. It feels great under my finger. I do like the Asus Pro Art. It just feels a little softer. The Ultra just feels a little bit more solid. I can't even explain it. That's just the feeling it gets like nice, firm, quick click. Where this it feels a little mushier. However, we do have the dial on the P16, which could be very advantageous to you as a creative professional. I've been using the P16 for about a month, and I've really been enjoying the dial with editing photos, doing some digital art. The B-roll I have is really just showing me using the dial with a random piece of art and showing the pen functionality with the stylus as I stroke up that piece of art so you can just see the thickness how this pressure sensitivity works. Using the dial to access the size of your brush, the hardness, the opacity, is really, really nice to have those right there on the fly. You don't have to get into any menus, take your hands off the trackpad, just everything is right there. So that's a big advantage from the ProArt. Another one is the pen compatibility. The Ultra is touchscreen, 
but it's not pen compatible. That's where you'd have to get the Samsung Galaxy Book Pro 360. But then again, you don't have the dedicated GPU. So that's where I think by combining the dedicated GPU Ultra with a 360 would be an incredible device for Samsung. That's where they have a big disadvantage in this head-to-head -head battle. Now let's go ahead and turn these laptops and look at the keyboards. Now they both have full-size shift keys, full-size center backspace, really nice main keyboard. They even have the same arrow keys down here along the bottom. The big advantage of the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Ultra is going to be the numpad. I know a handful of creators have commented below and they're constantly saying, I use a numpad as a creator. I use a numpad as a creator. Why would the pro art get rid of the numpad? I'm a creator, I use the numpad. So that would be an area where the Book 4 Ultra would be advantageous to you by having the numpad. Now the P16 also has upward facing speakers. So I'm gonna give you a sample of me using both the keyboard and the trackpad of both these devices. And then you're gonna hear a sample of the audio from the speakers on both devices. Now looking up at the display, there is a webcam on each of the top bezels. Here's a sample of those so you can see and hear for yourself. This is the webcam on the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Ultra and a little sample of the audio for you as well. This is the webcam on the Asus ProArt P16 and a little sample of the audio for you as well. All right, now looking at the display, you can see they're both exactly the 16 inch display. However, you do have the curved bezel versus the 90 degree bezel. So curved bezel on the Ultra, a 90 degree bezel on the ProArt P16. Personally, I like the 90 degree bezel. I don't love the curved bezel. I think it has a nice aesthetic, but sometimes it ends up like cutting things off weird. I just, I just don't like the vibe. I prefer just the standard squared off bezel. And they both have integrated bezels. So they're bezels that are inside the screen. So there's no difference there. These are both glossy displays. As you can see my reflection in the display. Samsung has stated that they have a technology that makes it less reflective. And I do agree with that. I'm gonna put these directly next to each other. And you can see my reflection in both of these. Look, I'm gonna put my hand up there. You can't see as clear my hand on the Samsung. Watch, put my hand towards it, you can't see it. Look how much clearer my hand pops up on the ProArt. So there's less reflectiveness from the glass on the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Ultra. That is a big difference with these two laptops. So Book 4 Ultra, less reflective than the Asus ProArt P16. Now, in regards to the actual display, they're both 3K displays. Let's talk about the P16 first. We have a 3840 by 2400 resolution at 60 Hertz, 498 nits of screen brightness at 100% sRGB, 98% Adobe RGB, and 99% DCI-P3 at a Delta E of 1.09. Compare that to the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Ultra, a 2880 by 1800 resolution at 60 Hertz, 400 nits of screen brightness, 100% sRGB, 97% Adobe RGB, and 98% DCI-P3 at a Delta E of 0.42. So a more color accurate display on the Ultra, but a slightly brighter display on the P16. Now let's talk about battery life. For the battery life results, let's look at the P16 first. We have nine hours of streaming video playback and past mark productivity, five hours of Photoshop and four hours of video editing Premiere Pro playback. Nine hours and 58 minutes for past mark productivity for the Ultra. Streaming video playback is actually 11 hours and 35 minutes, six hours and 42 minutes of Photoshop battery life, and then three hours and 54 minutes of Premiere Pro playback battery life. So a little bit better battery life results coming out of the Samsung Galaxy Book Ultra with the Intel Core Ultra processor. A little bit more efficient than this Ryzen AI9 HX series processor. Should probably talk about that 
while we're halfway through this video. We have the Intel Core Ultra 9 185H, an RTX 4070, and 32 gigs of RAM out of the Samsung Galaxy Book Ultra. For the P16, we have a Ryzen AI9 HX 370, an RTX 4070, 32 gigs of RAM, and one terabyte SSD. So those are the configuration differences between these two devices. If you're curious about the exact pricing and availability, head down in the description below and click those links. If you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. I must say though, that right off the bat, the P16 is way more budget friendly. You can get this device with an RTX 4060. You can get it with a 4070 and 32 gigs of RAM. You can get it with a 4070 and 64 gigs of RAM. And it's going to be less money on all three configurations than the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Ultra. So if you're going for price point, P16 actually wins out. Now, without further ado, let's get into the performance benchmarks. And let's talk first about the thermal management, because I know that's something that's pretty important to y'all. Now, what I did is I took a 4K nine minute clip, placed it in Premiere Pro and exported it out at performance settings. For the P16, it exported that in two minutes and 29 seconds. And the fan noise was 48 to 54 decibels with a 68 to 72 degrees Celsius on the CPU. Now for that same test, the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Ultra exported in two minutes and 21 seconds on performance mode, 44 to 46 decibels of fan noise, and then 73 to 78 degrees Celsius. So you're going to have a slightly faster export time out of the Samsung Galaxy Book Ultra, a little bit quieter, but a little bit hotter device upon the export. Just keep that in mind. So that's the thermal management differences between these two devices. Now let's go ahead and jump into the benchmarks. Looking at Geekbench single core and multi-core as well as Cinebench 2024 single core and multi-core, you can see that the P16 is a clear winner for the simulated benchmarks. It just doesn't really stand a chance up against the P16's HX series processor. Looking at Photoshop, you can see that the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Ultra stores a 6,754 compared to the P16's 8,343. And this isn't even the maxed out model. This is the model that's basically the same, RTX 4070, RTX 4070, 32 gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of RAM. And it's, it's like 2,000 points more performance inside of Photoshop. Now going ahead and moving down the line, let's go ahead and check out 3D modeling. And again, the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Ultra doesn't hold a candle. The reason, one of the biggest reasons being the maximum graphics power. The maximum graphics power on the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Ultra is 80 watts compared to the 105 watts on the P16. Basically, that is the amount of power the GPU is permitted to receive. So you have 25 more watts flowing to the P16 as opposed to the Book 4 Ultra. And those results are seen very clearly in those 3D modeling benchmarks. Now, the one area where the Ultra actually overtakes is in SolidWorks, but it's only by one or two points. Yeah, I think it's two points. Whole hefty two points. All right, now let's move on to Premiere Pro. We're going to look at the 4K export. We're taking a nine minute 4K clip placed in Premiere Pro, export it out at full quality 4K settings. You can see that the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Ultra actually overtakes by about eight seconds. Now, looking at the 6K export time, you see that the P16 jumps back out in front with a 16 minute and 57 second export time compared to the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Ultra with a 19 minute and 33 second export time. So definitely a good amount of export time advantage for the P16. Now for Premiere Pro playback, they're pretty much neck and neck. You can see that the 4K playback out of the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Ultra is zero drop frames out of the 16,177 in the project. Compared to the 6K B-RAW, and then 6K B-RAW is 24 drop frames and 6K red footage is 589. Now looking at the pro art, zero drop frames for 4K playback, zero drop frames for 6K B-RAW and 403 for 6K red footage. So we've definitely seen a bit better performance out of the P16 there. Looking at DaVinci Resolve, we have a one minute and 57 second 4K export out of the ASUS ProArt P16 versus the two minute and 37 second export time out of the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Ultra. I must say, if I'm going to get the best bang for buck device, it's gonna be the P16. This Ultra does have a little bit cooler thermals. It's a little bit quieter on the export time. Now, if I put the P16 in a whisper mode, it does the export in four minutes and 42 seconds. It has a 35 to 40 decibel fan noise and gets 62 to 67 degrees Celsius. 
Now, I don't have any B-roll for that, so just take my word for it. It's on my uh, chart here. So that is a way where you can get quieter and cooler thermals. However, the export time is going to be substantially longer. The P16 has the dial. It's pen compatible. It's got better performance in 3D modeling, and it's a more affordable device. So for me, the main reason I would choose the Samsung would be for the Samsung ecosystem. If you have a Samsung phone, watch, and tablet, it could make sense to go for the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Ultra. But overall, the best bang for buck is going to be the P16. Remember, there's links in the description if you want to make a purchase. I really appreciate it when you all use those links to help keep the channel live and the helpful content coming your way. And click or tap the screen here if you need more videos to help you with your buying decision. I'll see you in the next one.